Hi guys, my name is Kirsty. I'm really happy that you've joined me today. I'm on a farm outside of Lismore, normally in Sydney running workshops, and this is actually the first time I've ever run this workshop. I've been green cleaning for about 15 years. Uh, I found that when I moved out of home, the quickest way to save money was to actually stop buying a lot of the rubbish that my parents used in their house to clean it. So, um, so I've been doing this for a really long time and it's only just occurred to me to start teaching it because it's just such second nature to me and to my family and I think it's actually a really healthy habit to get into. Um, I just I have a little business workshops and I make stuff uh, and I sell around Sydney. So that's that's pretty much me. That's my logo in the background. Uh, you know, you'll get a booklet after class. Emily, I'll probably email that to you and you can send it out. And it's basically everything we've discussed with links to things that I haven't shown you and, some, you know, just some really good reference and my details. So if you ever want to ask even the most boring question, silliest question, most outlandish question, just drop me a line because I love I love engaging with the questions. So that's it, really. That's me. I'm going to be swapping between two different perspectives so that you can actually see me making some things. I'm not going to be doing a lot of making today because I think you'll find once you see the process and we talk about the process that it's really just um, you'll you'll learn it as you go. Um, I have a very basic kit of ingredients not all you need but some of them are essential like our essentials um, bicarb bicarbonate of soda which I think most people would have had experience with we use it for cooking in a lot of the recipes you'll find online it'll say baking soda now baking soda and bicarb soda are different baking soda is a combination of rice flour, bicarb soda and citrus, citric acid. So if you're, most of our recipes call just for bicarb soda. It is really, really easy to find in the supermarket. I'm just trying to figure out how, how you can see them. Don't worry about looking at my head. Sorry guys. Um, in the supermarket, I found you can buy, it's very cheap, but I always go for the one in the cardboard box. It's not about brands or anything like that. It's just because it's in cardboard, which makes it very easy to either compost or to recycle. Um, the rest are in plastic, and although we do uh, recycle soft plastic, I would still stick to cardboard. Or if you are lucky enough to be near a really good bulk store, they don't actually charge more than the supermarket per kilo. So if you have a nice container, like I've just got this old honey jar and I just go and fill it up, except I really, I have a three kilo honey jar that I actually go and fill up because I find that I use bicarb for a huge amount of things um, in, in my house, personal care items and for cleaning. So one of the best um, substitutes I find that bicarb um, is good for is You'll have to excuse me because I haven't used a lot of these products for about 15 years, so I don't even know if they still exist, like Jif or Gumption, things like that. So Bicarb is the perfect replacement for those um, products. A lot, of those, a lot of the products that we use today are filled with chemicals that, like thousands of chemicals actually, that haven't been tested to see how they, uh, how they react to our skin, to, you know, our airways and certainly not to the waterways that's not really a concern when it comes to using products so the more you can actually downsize your cleaning section of your house and take control of it with a small amount of natural ingredients you don't have to do it with everything but the more you you take certain things out of um you, the cycle of how you use them you one you won't notice that they were never there and two, you know that the things that you're putting down the drain or that you're inhaling as you, as you clean are probably not going to cause harm to anything. So bicarb, uh, it's not um, native to Australia. We don't have it here. It is a mineral deposit. Most of it comes from America. Um, there is also a few deposits in China and Israel. 
Um, so it is a mind product. So it actually is quite good to be mindful of how you use it. Uh, we don't just want to go splashing it all over the place because we have no idea when or if it will run out. Um, so, yeah, so excellent as a GIF replacement. Um, I might just show you. There are various ways and so like hundreds and hundreds of recipes on the internet about how to use this. After 15 years of trying so many and adding certain bits and trying this and that, I find that simplest is always the best because when you have to make things from scratch, the more complicated and intricate it is, you know, unless you really find the time and make the time to do it, you're not going to. So you want it to be really simple and really accessible. So the perfect bicarb paste, which will clean your sinks, your taps, the grout in your shower, it'll scrub your bath, scrub your toilet bowl, your sinks, your countertops, uh, anything that you would use gumption or GIF for. You would just need, I'm just going to use a tablespoon. And I do like to have a little bit of citrus. Now, this is the great thing about natural cleaning is that um, you can use actual real food in order to, to help the cleaning process. And citrus is a perfect example. I don't have any lemons or limes at the moment. I only have kaffir lime, which I'm going to use to squeeze into my paste. And it does create a little volcanic action, which is also a good thing to remember later on if you decide to have kids that they love this kind of thing. I don't know if you can see or hear that it's getting a bit volcanic. It's not the greatest angle. So I put a bit of citrus in there and then I save the peel for later. I'll be using that later. And then a little bit of water. We want it to be reminiscent of, just making sure you can see what I'm doing, guys. You'll have detailed instructions in the booklet, so don't really worry too much about how much I'm putting in. It all comes down to, um, to preference as well. Like, I like mine to be quite like thick paste. So you'll see it's gonna, it comes out like quite thick. And then with gloves on, you would then be using it or with a brush, a scourer, whatever it is that you use to, to put this paste on. And not only does it smell amazing because it's got lime in there, the lime helps break down extra buildup and um, scum on things. You'll find when you're using it, because bicarb is so good at absorbing stuff, that like when I use it on my kitchen stove top, it actually, even if you can't see lots of the oily residue, the bicarb will pick it up and it actually becomes, like it really does just pick it all up off and so your lovely green or white paste will start to turn brown. Then you know that it's actually doing the job and making your stove top incredibly clean. So I use that for an awful lot of things. Just as an aside, you can use this to scrub your face, your body and your hands as well. It is a really great body scrub. Um, if you're working in the garden or if you're working with, um, you know, dirty machinery or, you know, cars, whatever it is you're doing, if you get yourself covered in grease, bicarb paste will get everything off. Um, it'll get dirty marks off, off your body in a second. Much better than scrubbing with soap, absolutely. So basically that's, that's your paste and you can use that paste. I make it as I go by a car because it absorbs everything. If you've ever used it in the kitchen, you notice that when it's inside the box, it goes hard very quickly because it absorbs all the moisture out of the air. So it can get quite hard. So it is easier just to make this up as you need it and, and then just use it all up in one go rather than having lots and lots of jars sitting around of, of 
made things. It really is one of those things that you just, you make it and you go. You don't have to put the citrus in there. You can just use water and it works just as well. You can also, um, I'm going to talk to you about using vinegar. Um, we're going to make a vinegar infusion with our leftover citrus peels and some fresh herbs. And you can put that in there as well um, to kind of like double down on the cleaning because vinegar is an excellent cleaner and it's antibacterial. It kills germs. And so, again, it makes that nice volcanic paste for a second and then um and then it settles down and you can just use it to scrub i put some really weird things in the booklet things that you may not have thought of um, that i have used bicarb and vinegar to do like unclog sinks it's a really natural way to unclog a sink i don't know if you've ever had to do that you go to bunnings and buy bottles and bottles of drano which is highly highly toxic uh to unblock a drain it always works, but, but um, I've got a little recipe in there for using bicarb and vinegar and hot water to help unblock drains. Um, and it has saved me many, many a time in rentals. I think it's a really, really good trick because, you know, we're trying to save money. You don't need to call a plumber all the time. Um, so, yeah. So the great thing about bicarb is that just like this, it will also deodorize your carpets and your rugs. So if you wanted to sprinkle it, you leave, you kind of um, sprinkle it and you can just give it a little uh, dust in with your fingers, leave it for 20 to 30 minutes and then vacuum um, as normal and that will freshen your rugs. It's really, really good for cleaning up wine spills or any kind of spill, a bit like salt is as well. Sprinkle it on quite thick and it will absorb all the moisture out and you, you are then able to uh, vacuum vacuum up I want to make sure I mention everything I possibly can about I know most people um, if you're really into DIY cleaning or what once you've done this you actually will be really into DIY cleaning the next step is when you find time and um, is to try experimenting with making your own washing powder and dishwashing powder because that stuff is can also off the shelf in the supermarket filled with loads of chemicals even the ones that say they're eco aren't necessarily are it's really important i suppose then to, to to look into reading ingredients lists so you know what is in the things that you are buying a lot of it is the same same rubbish and can be completely avoided for years i made my own washing powder and dishwashing powder and i'm not going to show you how to do it here because it actually is incredibly laborious you need to have a lot of time i was at home with a newborn I had all the time in the world and that was before bulk stores were really popular and now they have such an amazing array of um, natural Australian made washing powders and dishwashing powders that like it's just, ugh, like few because I don't have to make it anymore because it is quite a pain but if you do want to make it it's, this is just a little aside there, there's an ingredient in most natural powders called washing soda and washing soda, you can buy it at the supermarket. It's always in plastic. It's never in big quantities. It's very hard to get hold of. So if you're trying to look at all the ways that you're reducing your waste in your household, the best way is to make it. And basically, it is just bicarb so soda that you bake in the oven on a tray for 20 minutes, in like on a 200-degree oven, stirring it occasionally. And what it does is it dehydrates the bicarb into a lighter crystal form and that's all it is when i realized that after the amount of times i went to the supermarket to buy that washing soda when i realized that that's actually when i gave up i was just like oh this is too hard um, but that's what you do it is very easy to achieve at home and again i will have links uh, in the booklet on that okay so bicarb is our number one first amazing ingredient that you really can't live without now, I just want to quickly, awesome, okay. Um, white, white, uh, white vinegar, very easy to get, very cheap to buy in the supermarket. You'll find two grades of this in the supermarket. One is called cleaning vinegar, which is about 10 times the price. It's just, it's, there's not actually different apart from the fact that it's got distilled water in it. Uh, just go to your baking aisle where the white vinegar is. This is the one thing I would say, it usually comes in a one to two litre plastic bottle. 
definitely make that investment the first time around to buy it in that that bottle because that bottle will you can refill it over and over again at the bulk store and the bulk store does not charge more than than the supermarket like vinegar is really really cheap this is 20 liters which you don't need to buy 20 liters but i needed it for a workshop and that 20 liters straight off the shelf at the bulk store because you can go into a bulk store and ask for bulk bulk which is not just oh, i need to fill up my jars it's like I want a whole bag of flour or I'd like to have a whole jar of, or a whole tub of vinegar. How much is that? I think this cost me $40 for 20 litres. It's, I mean, it's, it's going into its second year and I use it for everything. It was an absolute bargain. You don't have to buy 20 litres though. But maybe wait until you've got the space for that. But what I'm saying is you can just go in with your old Passata jars or your, uh, you know, your empty vinegar uh, bottle and just refill that. And a, a one, lit one litre is only going to cost you about 4 or $5, which is excellent because you always dilute it. You're never just using that. That one litre should actually make three litres of product. And that product that I always have in my house, it's a great way to use up citrus peels as well and, you know, other ends of your herbs and things like that is an infused vinegar. Um, completely antibacterial, antimicrobial, uh, really good for cleaning surfaces, windows, wiping down surfaces. I always spray it on my hob and wipe my hob down before I do um, the bicarb paste. I just find that it loosens everything up a bit better. And I just, yeah, I can't live without vinegar. I would say only ever use white vinegar for cleaning, okay? It is the cheapest and you would never buy an apple cider vinegar uh, and then waste it by cleaning your toilet. Even Corner Smith will tell you that. White vinegar is for toilet cleaning. So um, you don't have to have a Posada jar. You can use any jar you like, but the bigger the better. So we've got our squished kaffir lime from before and when we do infusions in vinegar it's always fresh ingredients because it infuses infuses the oil and sometimes the color of of the fruit or the herbs into it um, and you just chop it up and stick your bits in there i've got some more i've got mandarin peels Got a bit of bush lemon as well, which is amazing. And I've got some basil that I just picked from the garden. Citrus is an amazing cleaner. I mean, you, you know that from, there are so many products on the market that have orange, orange peel or orange, sweet orange um, essential oil in them. It's not just for the smell. They're just, the oils in the skins really, really help cut through grease. So basically, that's what we're doing. If you have more uh, peels and things, just put it all in there and you would just leave that somewhere out of the way, not in direct sunlight, and let it sit for two to three weeks. I know it sounds like a long time, but once you start doing it, you'll have a couple of them sitting there just waiting, ready to go. I often give it a shake, but you really don't have to. I infuse oils, as you can see over there, so I have to shake those. So it's no skin off my nose to shake that. Come two weeks, and then this will have a really, really strong citrus smell, which really aids in cleaning your bench tops and things because it just leaves everything fresh. You can add your vinegar to boiling hot water and a little bit of Castile soap, which will be my next ingredient, to mop your floors. Um, we always want to dilute the vinegar either one to one with water or, or two, two parts water to one part vinegar. Really depends on how strong you want things to be. It can get up your nose, as you know, vinegar can be quite intense. So, um, you know, it's just something you have to get used to. You end up thinking it's amazing. So I use this for everything. Um, for anyone who is using shampoo bars as well um, to wash your hair, uh, this vinegar rinse, uh, this also doubles as a vinegar rinse, okay? You can also, when it's diluted and um, popped in a spray bottle, 
you can use that as a toner on your face as well. Like I, I know I'm throwing in these really weird things that kind of don't go with green cleaning, but they're also good to know that, you know, I, this is my vinegar spray bottle. I always have it filled with my infused vinegar diluted. And then when I go to have a shower, I take it from the kitchen into the, into the shower and I spray it on my hair as conditioner. Once I've washed my hair with a shampoo bar, see, it's just multi-purpose, multi-purpose. Um, before I start talking about Castile soap, um, being able to, like I bought a whole bunch of these from Ikea years before I started on my plastic free journey. And I'm actually really glad I did because they, they last forever, but you don't have to buy all the things. Like I know that, um, the, the kind of the zero waste lifestyle has become quite, it looks really pretty on Instagram. It really does. But we're not trying to, um, replicate that perfectness you know with all of these say glass bottles which these glass bottles amber bottles are available um, at naturopaths so a lot of them get returns you can always see if you can get some I tell you right now you're cleaning in the bathroom and you drop it terrible plastic actually does have a place in our life but it's really really good if once you find some that you try and keep it forever because it's not necessarily going to degrade if you're really careful with it. I found because I have been making stuff for a long time, I didn't actually have any access to bottles or anything. So I just went and asked all of my friends who were, who use these, like they're going out of business because they say they're recyclable. Um, so I just asked them to save a whole bunch of these for me, including the tops, because these tend to be quite interchangeable into all different types of bottles. And I just have a collection of them in a box waiting until one breaks so that I can replace it. And I didn't pay anything for them. I think that's really essential when trying to lower your waste, that if you don't have to pay for it, don't. Um, buying these as well, whether it is like an Aesop or a thank you hand cream, or lotion technically they are recyclable but they are not being recycled this is the most undesirable type of pet plastic most pet plastic that gets recycled is clear so it can be turned from this into a drink bottle this stuff just gets chucked into landfill because it actually has no value for anybody unless it's being turned into more of these but but they're not it's something important to note i think when you know when buying things if you can find out what its end life is and it helps you make a decision about whether you actually need it okay that was a bit of a rant i'm sorry but it's important to note okay one of my next favorite ingredients is liquid castile soap um does anybody does anybody use this already um, most people don't know what it is, um, which I don't know if any of you have heard of Dr. Bronner's soap. It's probably the most famous natural soap on the market. And you can buy it in, and I do, buy it in like four litre um, bottles. I was about to call it a tub, but it's a bottle. Might not be practical for you guys right now. I mean, that'll set you back $85. That will last you about 18 months. Again, this is four liters of liquid soap. It's um, an olive oil based soap. All of it um, is made from, from oils. So it, it's plant derived. It's very, very easy on the waterways, on your skin. And this will make 12 liters of product. Now you can use it. I use it uh, a little bit neat to add to my, uh, if I'm mopping the floors, to, you know, to add a little bit of natural soap. You can also add it to a spray bottle with some essential oils to use as a proper uh, multi-purpose uh, cleaner instead of your vinegar. But the best thing to use this for is hand soap and body wash. Hand, hand wash, body wash, all of those products tend to be the same types of ingredients high in preservatives, synthetic preservatives and, and detergents, which are also like uh, not natural based. So they're not good for the waterways at all. So you can make your own hand wash and that's where these come in handy again to reuse. Hand wash, body wash 
add whatever essential oils that you love to it to make it exactly what you like. Uh, you can also wash your hair with it. I find it doesn't have the best results personally, but some people do. It really depends on your hair type. It's also, uh, if you buy the unscented version, which most bulk stores, they may not have that brand in particular, but a lot of companies in Australia are starting to make it as well and are offering it unscented. So it makes it really good for washing your dishes and you can add it to your dishwasher as well as a liquid wash. You can also add it to your washing machine as a liquid clothes wash as well. But I tend to find that it's actually that little bit side of expensive for me to want to actually put it in with my clothes. It's an excellent product. Um, you can go to our Falfa House, uh, Village Whole Foods in Marrickville. I, there's a source in um, Glebe. I don't know what other bulk stores are in the Inner West. I'm just assuming you're all Inner Westies because you go to UTS. That might be that might be wrong to assume that, but that's also my hood as well. Used to be anyway, um, so I know it very well. So you can go and buy as little or as much as you need and a litre will make you three litres. So it's definitely a worthwhile investment. And like all natural products, whether it be skincare, clothing, whatever, it, it does take time getting used to it. Detergents are really thick. You only need to use a little bit to get this amazing lather. Uh, whereas with Castile soap, you do need to you do need to get used to using it so that uh, the lather is right. I know that sounds really silly, but it works better on slightly damp hands. And the more you lather, the more it creates bubbles. So it's like I said, it's just about getting used to it. We did have a now, question. Oh, yep. Is it good if you have a sensitive skin? I think it would depend. Sensitive how, Johnny? Because um, I have sensitive dry. So for me, I found that it, it, it actually just makes my scalp drier. Also ah, my hair. So I thought I'd unmute myself rather than, than chat it. So thanks, firstly. That's really fine. great information. Um, yeah, look, I've tried every shampoo. Mm -hmm. um, and every shampoo really, really dries my scalp out. So yeah, at the too. moment... And I went to the pharmacy and I'm using Mugu. Um, oh, yeah. How's that going? Is, yeah, pretty good, actually. But again, it's really, it's quite expensive. So if I could make something for myself, um, that would be kind of good. Have you tried shampoo bars? I looked at them and I didn't try it because, again, I just kind of thought that would dry. Yeah. You know, like when you wash your hands with a, a, a bar of soap and it dries your skin out. I just thought that might not be good for me. Because I found, because, okay, like we're getting real personal now, Johnny. So I, <laughs> Sorry. I, I, no, 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 I have dry, sensitive, um, flaky scalp. And that yeah, and it sounds it's like flaky me. because it's dry. Yeah. Um, what I would suggest, do you have any coconut oil in your house? No, I tried it for cooking and I didn't like it, so I threw it away. Okay, well, I, look, I tried it for cooking too and didn't like it, but for skincare, mm -mm, it's really good. Oh, look, olive oil will do the same thing. What I tend to do is um, I tend to cover my head and my scalp in particular. I warm up a little, like really gently warm some olive oil and give myself a like a scalp massage mm. and i try to do that once a month to try to try and you know get some oil back into my mm. scalp because it's so dry then you have to make sure that you wash your head this is the flip side because you're having a problem yeah. with washing your hair um i switched to shampoo bars for this reason because i was finding that i just couldn't I just, it just, it was driving me crazy to the point where it actually hurt to wash my hair. Mm. And I found that buying shampoo bars really, really helped me. They're okay. also not that expensive. And if they, if you make yourself a vinegar um, rinse, mm. that also helps to balance the pH from. Yeah, the I've done that. Yeah, I've done that. Done. Okay, yeah, no, no. yeah occasionally it works not. when it gets really, really a bit gnarly, then yeah, that calms it down. And I've put olive oil and jojoba oil in as well, which is kind of my go-to thing but a shampoo the mugu is great but it's just it's kind of a bit quite expensive so um have you for... tried just quickly have you tried yeah. not washing your hair have you heard of the no poo movement not I have. i'm a bit scared of going out of the house if i didn't <laughs> whether you know that's, what people tell me <laughs> would they tell the me i smell because <laughs> i try i tried it for a year um 
And yeah, the head wrap really helps with that. But maybe you can't wear a fancy head wrap like me. I don't know. I'd um, love to. <laughs> Bicarb, bicarb and water as well. The paste also works for people when they start doing the no poo movement, they use bicarb. And the great thing about the bicarb is as well, um, as a mum, like ba babies are born with cradle cap, which is basically what dandruff turns into. This is, mm. I know this is not exactly what we're talking about, but we're moving on to essentials in a second. And that is actually the end of the demonstration. So I'm just going to quickly go on about okay. this. Yeah. Um, you can make a paste with bicarbonate water and get it in there and give your head a really, really good scrub. Mm. Um, and then do your olive oil and jojoba. Try and leave it on for at least a night. Maybe don't do it in winter when you're not going out quite so much or, mm. you know, in the time of COVID, you're not going out so much anyway. Yeah. So do a nice warm mask on your head and then, um, yeah, use your mugu. Maybe try to wash your hair a little less. One that makes the shampoo. Yeah go further but it also gives you a head a little bit of a break yeah no i do that as well but yeah i'll try the white carp i think that might that might be a good thing to do give it a try and look just okay. email me email me another time we can just talk more solutions cool. I'll give you thanks more so much things to try all right cool thank you and that's okay okay so Probably the most fun part of your cleaning is making up your essential oil blends. Okay, I've got this antibacterial blend, which I only use Australian essential oils. One, because they don't have to go that far. I mean, they don't have to travel too far. And I've learned to, for me, the most important thing is to try and live without everything and, and really pick where my things come from. I'm really about carbon footprint and and making sure I, you know i'm making better choices with the things i buy so i buy australian essential oils the supplier for them will be in my booklet um you're clearly welcome to buy whatever ones you like but we just so happen to make some of the best essential oils for cleaning i mean eucalyptus tea tree and lemon if all you did was buy those three that's all you're ever going to need i throw in orange there just because it's also really nice but lemon is outstanding for cleaning as far as essential oils go. I managed to get on one of my favorite tops just recently. I don't even know what it was. I think it was like a, it was one of my kids' pencils that you wet it and it turns into paint. And I just got like this brown mark on my white thing. And I added water to it and it just ran everywhere. And I completely freaked out, you know. Um, I don't tend to be that precious about things, but it really freaked me out. And I thought, I'm just going to experiment and put lemon um, essential oil on there because I know it's really good for breaking down stains. And I rubbed it together and it literally just removed the, the stain as I was working with it. And then I put some more on there and threw it in the wash and it came out and it was gone. And I was just like, ah. So lemon essential oil for getting rid of sticky labels on jars because once you start DIYing, you're going to save every every glass jar that you come across. Uh, you, you won't be able to help it. Um, so I've also got a really good um, label or oh, sticky, sticky remover um, recipe in the booklet that is bicarb and essential oil. I use this so in my wash i put my powder in and i put a few sprinkles of essential oil in and then i use a little bit of vinegar in the fabric softener section because you don't need fabric softener uh, vinegar does the same thing and you know your clothes don't come out smelling like vinegar um, they come out fresh it's antibacterial it's just wonderful and then your essential oils give the beautiful fresh smell um, we know eucalyptus is really good for cleaning. Lemon is excellent for cleaning. Tea tree is another really good one. I used to just have a spray bottle with water in it and a few drops of tea tree oil because tea tree is actually, I mean, you don't want to go out of your way to ingest it, but it's actually completely non-toxic. So it's really, really good as a like to wipe down surfaces, especially that um, that kids are touching, and to be able to wash kids' toys and and all those things. I know it's a bit kid centric, um, but you know it's good to remember this. You might need it one day. So you know that if the child is then playing with said toy that you've just cleaned and putting it in their mouth, you're not actually going to do them any damage. It's only a little bit of tea tree, but but it's actually um, completely safe, which is great. 
So, a couple of tricks. I've told you about putting it in with your powder to, because to, everybody loves that smell of, you know, old school washing powder and fabric softener. It has a really nostalgic thing for a lot of people. But creating your own blend for that freshness and keeping your clothes fresh is um, ideal. I use this for everything. So um, I pop it in to mop the floors. I put a couple of drops in the toilet. I have it like a little spray that people can use, um, you know, when they've, made, when they've made a smell. And it keeps everything really fresh. Another great tip is to put a few drops into your toilet roll. You just like drip it down into there onto the paper and then every time you use the toilet roll, a waft of fresh scent comes, comes wafting out of the toilet roll, which I absolutely love. It's a bit silly, but I love it. You can also add um, bicarb to little bowls and add some essential oils to them and they act as room deodorizers. So you can like pop it on the fridge or, you know, down behind, you know, wherever, out of the way so that nobody, no pet could eat them or whatever but they will add a really nice fresh smell to the house um how else do i use them i'm trying to think i actually think oh also i put it in with my castile soap to wash my hands and to wash my body so i really just keep it extremely simple in that regard so everything kind of has the same smell the one thing that i haven't discussed which is also in the booklet is um Buying some clove bud oil, which comes from India, it'll be, it'll be at the um, essential oil place, is one of the best essential oils that you can have in your house. Clove and vinegar are two of the only things that actually kill mould. I know that we use bleach and shower cleaners to clean mould, but all that does is actually just bleach it white. That's why it comes back, because it's just been bleached white rather than killed. So... Uh, a teaspoon of clove bud oil in a, a spray container like this uh, sprayed around your bathroom when you're noticing that it's getting a bit damp and moldy spray it on a couple of days in a row and just let it sit there and soak go in and spray your vinegar antibacterial spray and then make up a bicarb paste and just scrub the whole thing and then give it a good rinse and that really should kill the mold and that it's not just in the bathroom. If you find that you've got mould in the kitchen or anything like that, then it's a really good, um, really good uh, cleaner. It's incredibly intense, though, just like how bleach or any of those easy off bam things can also make you faint in the bathroom. So can clove oil. It's very strong. So always be in a well-ventilated area when using that. Quickly, I want to run through some really silly tips and some other things that I find really important in my cleaning kit. Um, a friend gifted me this the other day. It's from Kmart. It was quite cheap, but it's really, really good for cleaning. I think, you know, I tend to shy away from, from buying new things at all for cleaning. So this was great. It was lovely and it works really well. Kmart, cheap. Otherwise... They're at eco stores and they're incredibly expensive. Um, old socks. Old socks are great for using instead of gloves. If you just, you know, if you don't mind your fingers getting soggy, getting in there to clean the hob and things like that, they're really, really good. Once they've got holes in them, you can't really use them for anything else. They re they become really good dusters, scrubbers, you name it. Um, if you know someone or if you are clever enough to know how to crochet, Somebody crocheted this for me. I absolutely love it. It is um, hard enough to be able to scrub uh, and um, it's, yeah, it's just a really, really nice and rewashable over and over again. Doilies. These are really silly, these ones, but they work also really, really well for scrubbing. So I have a bunch of these that I bought, I don't know, 10 years ago from an, uh, an op shop. Always going to use them as coasters. My husband hates them so much but he loves the fact that I scrub things with them. He's just like, I'm so glad they're not sitting on our coffee table. So, and they're washable. And that's the thing is that if you can find things of natural fabrics that um, do the job and are washable over and over again, it's going to be much better than most, most of our rags are made of plastic. So they shed microfibers and 
I think we're learning more and more that anything we can do to keep any of that garbage out of the uh, waterways, the better. Save your empty bottles. This was like an eco store shampoo or dishwashing liquid that I had years and years ago. It's actually made of corn, so I could compost it, but I really like it because I can put one of my tubes on there and I can use it as a body wash or whatever. We don't have heaps of space. I get that. You live in the city. I lived in a one-bedroom apartment on Parramatta Road in Camperdown for 15 years. You can store a small amount of stuff. If you just had a tub of things, just a plastic tub from wherever, filled with your bits and pieces, you will be able to find a way to hide that. Okay, op shops, heaps in your area, best place to start for buying bits and pieces that you might need. Tea towels are my number one thing that I love to have in my house. I don't use paper towel. Paper towel is made from trees. We don't need to chop down trees in order to wipe down our benches. Tea towels, especially old linen ones, are usually well worn in and work really, really well. You know, $2 from the op shop, maybe $4. Get a collection of them, use them for everything. You know, I think we probably put two to three like in the washing basket every day because we're using them for everything, wiping spills and, you know, they just become the new rag. Flannelette pillowcases, you don't need to buy floral ones, but, you know, if you've got old ones that you're not using, tear them up and turn them into rags so that you can use them to wipe down your bathroom or, you know, clean, clean your bath, clean your shower, you know, good old worn in cotton or linen is going to be the best thing for you to use. And then you just wash them when you're finished. Um, and then fold them up and reuse them and just put them away in your kit. These are like, I really, I can't stress enough how invaluable I find things like this instead of using paper towel. Um, socks told you where to get the jars from oh really last daggy daggy trick if you're living in a rental and you've accidentally scratched the wooden floor nuts of any kind break one open and rub it into the scratch and not only will the oil help blend the scratch but the little bit of nuts kind of yeah just make kind of fill in the spaces I know that sounds like really weird to tell you that one, but I actually just used that the other day to hide a scratch that I put in my own floor because I don't want to tell my husband. So it works really, really well. I think I've probably like completely overwhelmed you with so much information. Lucky it's all in the booklet that's coming. Does anyone have any white walls in rentals? Hmm. Okay, what is the finish on the wall though, Crystal? Is it like a like a rent like a non rendered, um, you know, when they paint just over the the render? Kind of, I know that I don't know how to explain it. So that you're worried that if you actually scrub it, it might wear the paint away. Is that is that your situation? Yeah. Okay, I'm just having a think. I would start with a. I would start with, even if you've just got a bit of detergent to hand right now, I would use Castile soap, make a Castile soap with a really small amount of bicarb in it and just do a really tiny patch and gently. Bicarb is an excellent abrasive, uh, but it is really, really um, gentle. I actually clean my teeth with this. I forgot to mention that. That's my most favourite thing to do with bicarb is to clean your teeth. Um, and so you can, I would give that a, like just do a real test patch. Otherwise, something like Metho or I think you should probably email me and I will have found, a, I will have found an answer for that by this weekend if you want to ask me that again, Crystal. Best tips. I've, look, I've put some bloggers on in the booklet that are a really good place to start. They've been DIY cleaning for, uh, you know, as long as I have. Um, they've got great recipes. The internet is an amazing place to look for things. Uh, DIY, natural cleaning, and then write what it is that you want to know or you want to try, and it's right there for you. Um, I put three or four bloggers that I really like, and I think that they will usually come up in that search, and I would always look at their 
their their ideas first um, purely because most of the other people further down the, the Google the Google page are probably just cut and pasted exactly what those people have said because that happens a lot on the internet as well um, I think that I think I think I've told you as much as I can today Emily um, what does yeah, anyone else have? yeah and you can, if you want to talk to me, you can just unmute yourself. I'm, oh, unless you don't want to, it's totally fine. <laughs> no pressure. Okay. No. I really appreciate you guys being here today. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope. Uh, and please, actually, can you give Emily your like most brutally honest but kind feedback because it is the first time that I've actually spoken about this even though I've done it for 15 years I I was really actually up all night thinking oh my gosh how am I going to translate this so that it doesn't come across like you know as this overwhelming thing so I really appreciate you guys um being here with me today and I hope that everybody is keeping well in this weird weird time because you guys are all in Sydney, I like. I feel very, very safe where I am. We haven't had a we haven't had a single case for six weeks up here. Um, so it, you know, you guys are doing remarkably well keeping it all together down there. We did have one more question. Oh, please, yes. Uh, what is your suggestion to transform bar soap into liquid soap? Oh, there are some really good um, like recipes on how to do that on the internet. People tend to, so even if it's just the little end bits that you're talking about, people tend to melt them down in water, like grate them if it's a, a proper bar, and then people cook it to a liquid and then you can pop it into a bottle and then dilute it. Um, I've never done it because it, it, just seemed, it just seemed messy. But if you're wanting to create liquid soap, there are excellent... Um, how to's on the internet, particularly by some of those women, the women that you will get in the booklet um, that they, they literally have done everything. But if you're just talking about your little ends of soap as well to use up, I always, I just chuck them in a little um, soap bag, which is probably just an old Aesop canvas bag. Someone gifted me one, one time and I use it for everything. I put all the soap in there and make my children use it to wash themselves and use it all up. So that's a really good way to use up the ends of your soaps as well. Anything for mildew? Yes. Uh, okay, so mildew usually comes from the ground up, doesn't it? So if you have carpet, it's quite a tough one because if it's coming from the floor up, you need to figure out one where, like, how to stop that. You can always put bicarb like you would um, to uh, freshen your carpets. Put the bicarb in the place where it's coming up from the carpet so it's sucking all of that out. You can make a bicarb paste to, to clean and the clove to clean the wall. And then I would, you can actually just get boxes of um, bicarb and open it up and that absorbs the excess moisture in the air. They do tend to make a few of those, um, those things at Bunnings. They have those buckets that you can open. It will actually draw all the moisture into the bucket. They tend to be quite good as well. And I don't think that they're toxic. So. Oh, yeah, that's damp red. Yeah, okay. yeah, and then you can yeah. also buy refillable ones. Awesome. Okay. So yeah, you can definitely use that that same situation for mold to clean up the mildew. But in terms of sorting it out, you need to find the source of the problem as well. That was probably you probably knew that already though. Okay. Um. So I will probably arrange for the just for Caroline to get the booklet sent out later this afternoon or on Monday. Um, you'll have all my details on there, guys. Please don't be shy ever. I love, I do, I love answering questions. I mean, if I can, I try my best. So, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you so much for having me again. And, uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your weekend. I hope it's a fun one. <laughs>